talking about blogging and in particular you know, connecting um, email newsletters to, to the blog. Our client here, uh, Katie in particular, who works at Retaining Wall Systems, has done a fabulous job here creating an email newsletter to send out to their list. And um, I'm, I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed with this newsletter, um, talking about the challenges and especially the problem solved and the benefits for the client. This is just so important when it comes to marketing to uh, focus on problem solved and benefits for the client. Um, it's, it's the easy way for, for people to convert clients more easily if they focus on um, the problem solved and the benefits for the clients rather than talking about, you know, um, me, 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 um, like how many years we've been in business, how professional we are, blah, blah, blah. This is really what people um, want to see if they want to convert. This and also social proof in the form of reviews and testimonials. Um, are really important when it comes to explaining to people why you are the go-to expert in your field. Now, um, this newsletter is being created with MailPoet, and MailPoet is a fabulous plugin for creating newsletters. Um, so let's just have a look at. Well, you can see that this is a newsletter being built in MailPoet. And you've got um, lists of subscribe, well, you've got lists and subscribers, so you can have different lists depending if your subscribers um, might be in different sectors or, or things like that, and if they're customers versus leads, whatever. You, you might want to split different newsletters up. Now, all um, the Foxy um, Web Design Club customers get MailPoet, um, as well as anyone in Foxy. Um, that's on the Foxy um, maintenance plan. And uh, this is really good value. Um, when you start to add up all this software that you get access to, you start to realize what great value um, either of those plans are. Um, because you can get up to 25,000 subscribers with our, with our plan when you go on the maintenance or on the Foxy Web Design Club. And when you start to add up all the software, there's, I'll just quickly talk about another one, um, which is Skirly SEO. And we can also install Skirly, which is the number one um, SEO plugin for WordPress to really um, start skyrocketing up the ranks um, for Google. So um, you can look up Skirly, you can have a look at the pricing there. But again, um, just, just those two bits of software alone um, outweigh what we charge at Foxy for either the Designers Club or for the Maintenance Plan Club. So, um, so some really big benefits there. But what the client wants to do is, um, and I'll just read the email, um, they're writing case studies for an EDM, a, a direct mail, um, for further reading to a page link. Um, so they would like an additional page set up for projects, if that makes sense. And yes, it does. It does make sense. So let's just have a look. We'll keep this page open and we'll just have a look what they've got right now. So they've got about services, all the different services they offer, the team, the gallery. And the gallery is kind of like, um, in, in this case, it is, it's got the testimonials here, which are great. Um, but it's done more in terms of the services they offer. Um, concrete fill, dry stack, sleeper walls, etc., etc. So it does actually make sense to have um, a further page, which would be the projects page. Now, if we've only got one project so far, that would be this one. Then I would, I would be inclined. Well, yeah. Ho hopefully, there will be more. There will be more of these project pages down the track. Um, you, you. you the more blogs and the more emails you send out, the more leads you're going to get. And um, so, you know, getting leads is super important. Converting leads is the most important. All right. So um, I note that this gallery already says projects. All right. And this is a page. We know it's a page because up here, when we're logged in, we can see edit page. 
But I would start to be inclined now to start to create some posts um, simply because posts um, are so easy to create a blog page for and then to have really good navigation for them. Let me just explain very quickly. Um, I'll go to a website that is currently being built or rebuilt and they have a projects page. If we click on that and we notice they've got four projects here. Um, four projects that they've worked on and completed. And when you click on any of these links, note how this takes you to a, this says edit post, because this is a post in WordPress, not a page. And that's slightly different. So WordPress is built of, of many um, um, parts, but one the, the two main important parts are pages and posts. So pages are generally what you have up here on the top menu. And then, um, Posts are generally like blogs um, and, and they could be all sorts of things. They could be projects or they could be your sponsors or it could be a business directory or it could be team members or it could be blog posts on interesting news articles and things. And uh, and and so now we're going to so that I'm just explaining what posts are so that we, when we come back here, you'll know, you'll know why I do it in this way. I usually do it in this way. There's in WordPress there's many different ways you can achieve similar results. All right, so now we've create um, this post. Let's just try and find that that newsletter again. Uh, which page did I have? Here, here we go. And I guess this would be the title, Keystone Wall Integration. Um, I guess that would be the name of this project. So we'll put that in here as a title up here, Keystone Wall Integration. And um, I'll just start doing a few things to set this up. Um, first of all, um, actually, we'll go back to that, that example page one more time. Whoops, sorry. We'll go back to that example page one more time just to explain on these projects. When you call up all these different posts like that and you can see this image, that's, that image has been drawn from the featured image. All right, so just be aware of that. So... I would say this is one of the most important pictures on this particular article. So I'll look for that picture there to add as a featured image. All right. And you'll see this come into play soon. Now, where is that photo? I've got to find that photo now. Um, it looks like that one, but, but no, the, uh, the, the photo had, yeah, that, that looks like it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. All right, we'll put that one in. And then, because we're using the Astra theme, um, you can, some of these settings are default anyway, you don't really need to do it, but um, I'll, I'll just put it in so you can see the settings I, I have for this particular design. Um, I'm going with the full width stretch, which goes from end to end rather than a box design. We'll disable the post title, the breadcrumb, and the featured image. Um, we'll disable the transparent header because we've already got our own header through um, through a custom layout there and um, we should make a video about custom layouts at some point soon as well all right so that's published this is now published but now we need to edit it with Elementor and start building the bits and pieces now I'm just going to drag this window outside so I can just come in and copy and paste a little bit more easily the first thing we need is of course the title so I'll dra drag a heading widget over there and put in the title. Um, because it's the very first title, we'll make it a heading one and center it. And we'll put in a bit of space um, above and below. Now, we could also, um, if we have a look at this website on the front page, let's see if we, if we need to emulate any design there. Yes, so a lot of these pages have this full width banner behind them like like so um, so if we wanted to copy that um, I've probably made a template for it already let's have a look in our template library and um, so we've got feature feature old um, landing page project services I've forgotten what I what I would have even called it now um, let's call it um, feature let's see what feature does this is probably not it, but let's have a look. And we don't need to import the settings. We've already set up, established our settings. 
no, that's not it. That's not what we want. So what what I'll do is I'll just grab a template. This is a feature in Elementor. I'll, I'll find a page where I really like the look of it. Probably that's too deep. Um, let's have a look. You know, I'm not in love with that white white strip there anymore. I, I'm thinking I might come back to this and remove that because I'm not in love with that. But regardless, just for the sake of brevity, um, we'll, we'll start with that now anyway. And all I want to do is select this, um, this section here and save it as a template. And we'll call it um, section because it is a section. And it is the top, um, it is the top, yeah, top, top of the page. So section top page, that's pretty clear now. So if I come back to this later in a few months and I've forgotten, hopefully that's clear enough for me to understand. Okay, so now it's necessary, um, well, I, I'll just copy this again. Oh no, I'll leave that there. I'll press update, right? But it will be necessary probably for me to refresh the page for that template to become available. Um, it might be in there, it just might not. It's quicker for me just to refresh the page, right? And then and then go looking for it. So I've refreshed the page. I'm looking for the template. And um, we called it section top page. There it is there. No, we, we've already, as I said, we've already got our settings. We don't need to import new settings. And what I'll do now is I'll get rid of that top section and that's what we have there. That's what we see there now. And um, I'll, I'll paste in the text that I had there, Keystone Wall um, Integration. And as I said, I don't quite like that, how it doesn't go edge to edge, that panel. So let's see if we can't fix that. At the moment, I notice this section is boxed. Let's make it full width. And then that goes from edge to edge. And so if we're going to have a background color behind that column, like such as we do um, is probably a background overlay, I dare say. Yeah, it's a background overlay, um, I think, in there. Um, personally, I, personally, I don't actually want any of this. Um, I'll get rid of that, and we'll get rid of um, we'll get rid of that. And I prefer that just nice and clean. I mean, I can read that. I've got no problem reading that. Um, we probably want to use those new pictures though. So let's just have a look. Um, what we have here is a background gallery slideshow. So we'll delete those images, reset the gallery, yes. And then we'll choose some new images. Now let's just have a look at what images we've got in here. That image, oh, this is very good. Um, it's very deep though. This, and also um, it's one megabyte. It's too big. This is just too big. Um, we, you know, ideally we want to have um, images at about 100 um, kilobytes, which is a tenth of the size of that. Um, even if it's if it's a widescreen one. So let's just have a look. I'll, I'll pro probably need to redo all of these images because all this is going to do is slow down the website, make it a bad user experience for people visiting it, and... Google will rank the website poorly with any pages that have um, really like, you know, it'll slow it down. So we, we'll get ranked poorly from Google, which we don't want. All right. So what I'm going to have to do is very quickly um, fix up all these photos. And the way I'm going to do that is you'll note down here, here in our image gallery, we can see the file URL. This is the path to where that website lives, uh, sorry, where that image lives in the website. So we can simply copy that URL, right? Copy to the clipboard. And we can go over, open a new tab and we can open up the image over here. And we here we can see um, that the name of the file is Lane Cover one scaled JPEG, all right? Now, if I do a right click on this, a right click on this image, um, I can now save this um, into the client's folder of images for retaining wall. And I'll probably make a new folder called projects. Okay. And I'll also, um, just bear with me. 
I'll also make a folder called Keystone Wall Integration, all right? Just, just to make life easy. Um, so I've got to find it again. So Images, Projects. I'll make a new folder here. It's always a good idea to, to try and, um, you know, put your, put your uh, assets away in somewhere that it's going to be easy to find if you need to find it again next time. And I'm going to make one more folder called Supplied because the, these are not the photos I actually want to use. I'm going to make these photos better for, for a website, okay? So there it goes in there. Now I should discuss, we're going to have another lesson about SEO and Google rankings and how to optimize images for Google SEO. But that's going to be another lesson down the track. We won't, we won't do that right now. All we want to do is make sure that this image is the right size um, for, for the website so that we don't get penalized. Okay. Now I'm using Photoshop as you can see. Um, but if you don't have Photoshop, just do a Google search for free Photoshop alternatives. Cause what we're doing here is not advanced. Like Photoshop has thousands of really advanced features. This isn't one of them. All we're doing here is optimizing this photo for the web for a website. And we're going to make it a JPEG. Um, file on low quality 10% and you'll notice down here that the size of this is still 342 unfortunately but that's also because this image size is 2500 pixels wide now the width of your your standard television screen or HD monitor forget 4k we'll just talk about HD screens is 1920 wide um, it, it, by the way HD, HD um, videos and 1920 wide by um, by 1080 high, just so you know. Um, so when I change that to 1920, we've got that down to 200K. So it's now about 25% as big as it was before, but I think we can still do better than that. Um, in fact, this photo, look, I may as well because I'm here, right? I may as well um, improve this photo even more because there's a lot of shadow in there and um, the sky is a bit bleak. Let's see if we can't. There's another There's another program I use called Luminar. Most of the stuff in that you can do in Luminar, you can do in Photoshop. Um, it's just I really like Luminar um, because it's just so quick and easy to use. So this is one of my little photography secrets, these Luminar. And um, we've got fast scenery fixes. These are all presets, by the way. Big city lights, overcast, blah, 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 blah. So I usually start with a preset. So let's try scenery. And we'll go for a fast fix. That's a lot better. Pleasing touch. No. More volume. Yeah. Yeah. And notice how more volume also replaced our sky there, um, which I think looks pretty cool. Um, it looks better than that bleak, bleak um, sky there. <laughs> I think you can start to see the power um, of this little app. Um, like I say, I could do a lot of this stuff in Photoshop, but I could never do it this quick. And here, we'll go in and edit this photo now because what I do want to touch up is, um, is the light a bit. What I want to do is I want to get rid of some of those shadows because I'd like to see more of that face. Oh, there we go. We'll bring the shadows up so I can see a bit more of that face. And this photo is probably slightly too um, saturated now. So we'll go to the color and we'll remove just a little bit of that saturation so it looks just a little bit more lifelike. And I'm going to go with something like that. And... Look, you could work on this all day, but obviously it, it depends on what the client's budget is of how much time you're going to spend on stuff like this. Um, for me, um, using tools like this really helps me get the, the wow factor happening um, really, really, really quickly, but without wasting too much time and budget, which, you know, which we probably haven't budgeted for, okay? So again, we'll go to JPEG, we'll go to the 10%, we'll change the image size to 1920, and let's have a look from there. We've got it down to 259 now. What I might do is have this in two versions. Um, 
So we'll go back to our um, folder here. Whoops. Supplied. Okay. Keystone wall integration. So we'll put it in there and we'll call this one 1920. Um, yeah, we'll call that one 1920. And it, this might be as small as we get, but maybe we, yeah, maybe we don't need this to be this big. Um, so I'm going to prepare a couple more versions. First of all, I'm going to crop this. We, we can save some space. Remember I told you about um, HD video? That's at an aspect ratio of 16 to 9, okay? That's your standard kind of standard um, film size aspect ratio too. Um, you'll note that modern televisions uh, and modern um, video um, is usually 16.9, 16 to 9, sorry, ratio. Some videos go further. They'll go like four to one. But I'm not gonna, I'm not here to talk about aspect ratios. The reason I'm doing cropping this is to save more file size depending on how we use this photo. So again, I'll make the width 1920. We've got that down to 200 now. Ideally, I'd like to get it down to 100, but there's a lot of color going on and, and that's why. Um, so let's go to quality five. See, even when I put it on quality five, I'm still not seeing a drastic reduction in quality. And now we're down to 166, all right? What I might do is I might just go the other way. I might go back to a quality of 10 and I'll put in an image size of 1600. And let's see if we can get down to a, uh, down to um no we've still only got it down to 150k. Look, I think that's about the best I can do, but I think you'll also agree that that's a far bigger difference than what it was before. Like it was either 900k or, or a whole megabyte. So so we have saved a lot of space there. Um, I'll save this again, and this time we'll call it 1920 and. 16 to 9 ratio all right and we're going to do one more we're going to do one more um so i'll just go step step a step back um and let's go for a crop a square crop um of one one to one um now using our using our um rule of thirds Let's concentrate on the important figure here. So this is more about composition with photography. When you use the rule of thirds, this really helps make this an interesting photo. Okay, so using the rule of thirds, we've focused on different elements in the foreground and the background, and we've, 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 we're telling a story. And the story here is that they're building some, some fine quality walls. All right. Now, when we save this one, we only really need to save this as 1080. And, and by the way, this is also the same specs that you would use for Instagram because um, the people who created Instagram, they also realized that there's a fine cutoff point between quality and file size and loading speed. Now, unfortunately, this is still um, 140K. Just because of the variety of colors in this photo, it's making it really hard for me to get it under a hundred K. So what I might do is go down to 800 square and now I've got it at 80 K and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. All right. So let's use that one and um, we'll save it one more time and we'll save it as 1080 square. All right. So that's the first photo um, done and optimized. Um, and I, I think you can see from that exercise um, what's involved with coming in and um, improving photos for them to load faster, uh, look better and everything. And you can do, like I say, you can do most of that with free Photoshop alternatives or you can spend the bucks and get the software. Luminar, by the way, um, does not cost as much as Photoshop. They, they, they have, uh, it's more like a yearly subscription model and you're looking at under 200 bucks a year. So 
It's a lot cheaper to go with that than, than Photoshop. Or you could be like me and have both. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I love software, as, as you can tell. So I'm just going to go and rinse and repeat that whole process with all of these photos, right? Um, but I'll spare... Oh, and note, note that there's a white line down on the bottom here. We don't want that, okay? So I'll just point that out. Um, and, I'll, and also note that this file is a PNG file. Now, PNG files are, are, are really useful um, when, with, with websites, but you, the only time that you'd ever generally use a PNG file is when you want a transparent background on the photo, right? Because PNG files are generally, they, they, they're a bigger file size than JPEG. So you only use them when you absolutely need them, all right? Now, now I've explained all that. I'm going to put this video on pause. I'm going to process all these photos, and then, um, and then I'll come back and we'll do the rest of that that um, post. All right. So I've processed all the different photos, and I've made different versions um, for different situations. Um, what we should probably do to tr oh look, I'll leave these images there and let the client replace them in that newsletter because she'll be rewriting that soon anyway. Um, but what we will do is put the new ones in and um, and then then she'll be able to see visually um, what the old ones look like before she replaces them if, if I leave them there. And then once they're all replaced, we can remove them from the library and that will reduce the overall size of the entire website. We don't need these images in here either. I'm guessing that these sunglasses popped up because maybe we used um, a certain template um, to get started on a design that might have had these um, irrelevant images as a placeholder. I'll leave them there just in case the client does require them for something, but I'm assuming these can be deleted as well. And um, it is actually easier to delete things in bulk um, from the actual media library itself. And I'll just show you that very quickly. We'll just go straight into the dashboard into the media library while those photos are, are, are loading and you can actually bulk select those images um, when you select that bulk to, bulk select and then you can um, you, you can click on multiple ones and delete them permanently all right so just be aware of that so right now we're looking for um, an image library I'm just going to make this go away because I don't want to select them all and I don't want to deselect everything one by one this will be quicker just to make it go away and come back and here's all those new images. Uh, actually, these sunglasses are useful as a breakwater, so I can see what ones are the new ones. Okay, so I created some 16 by 9 ones. Not that one, that's 1080, as you can, I'll show you in a minute. This is a 16 by 9, so I'll, I'll select that one. Uh, that's a square, I'll deselect that. That's a 16 by 9, I'll use that. That's a 16 by 9, I'll use that. That's a square. I don't want that one. There's a 16 by 9. Uh, there's there's a square. No, I'm looking over here, see? And I called the what they are, all right? Uh, that's another square. Um, that's another square. That's a 16 by 9. Now, this might be overkill, but we'll just put these in for now and see what this looks like. Create new gallery. Um, we can rearrange them. So this was a really good one. We'll put that up front. Um, and look, let's stick with three. No one's going to sit there looking at five photo slides. Um, we'll get rid of that one and we'll get rid of that one and we'll stick with them. All right. And so now, um, there's our, our slider behind the, um, behind the text there on the top panel. All right. So let's go back to this, um, email newsletter and we've got a little bit of text here to copy. Um, in fact, it might be easier to copy this text and stuff if I, rather than be on the back end, um, it would be easier to be on the front end with this. So let's preview this. That way I can select more text at a go. And see, um, Mail Poet shows you what this looks like on um, desktop or mobile. Um, let's see what it looks like on mobile. And now we can copy more text at a go, like this. 
All right, so um, let's go with, whoops, I don't want a template here. We'll just build this from scratch. Um, we'll go for a section that has two columns. And just for the, the sake of um, brevity, we'll just get this text editor and we'll just paste this all in like that. Um, look, that's probably good good enough. Let's have a let's have a look what code we copied over. Oh, of course, because of the nature of email, right? All the design is done in in a table. We we don't really want to put all the design here in a table. Tables are a bit old fashioned, but emails a bit old fashioned. So what we'll do is we'll just paste all this text into this window. We'll remove all the formatting and we'll come back here and we'll format it again. So objective was a heading and we'll put that heading in heading three. Um, now we'll want a, let's have a look at our design again. Let's just get that other win, the other window so we can have a look again at this design. And um, yeah, so what was another a cool photo? Um, yeah, let, let, let's just have a look in our library for our photos. We'll put an image in over here. And the thing is, once these photos have loaded all once, um, they've already loaded, okay? So if we call it up again, it's not actually wasting extra space because it was already called up. It's going to be in, in the browser cache. So it'll be quite safe to use this one and not use up any more file size, all right? Um, and now what we want to do is we want to pad this out a bit. I'm going to turn off the link. I'm going to turn on percentage and I'll put, whoops, excuse me. I'll go just go back to Firefox. We're going to put some padding. We'll start with 3% at the top and 3% at the bottom and see what that looks like. Actually, I'd prefer 5% at the top. I like that better. And um, look, that's good enough for now to get just to get started on this. And now we'll just duplicate that layout. And for um, a bit of variety, what would it look like if we swap those columns around? I'm not sure. What do you think? Should we keep it uniform? Maybe we keep it uniform in this case. And um, again, we'll get the, the next photo from the library. And um, we'll go in with this one, 16 by 9. And copy some more text. Um, these um, Here we have a bullet list. All right, and maybe this long photo was better, best for for this block of text. Let's let's just have a look. So um, again, we'll paste it into the text window so that we don't copy over that table code. Um, we'll use a heading three for that, and then the rest of this, the re rest of this text will make it a bullet list. All right, and we've got to put our returns back in. We've lost our returns, so. Um, I'm just using my keyboard cursor and pressing return, keyboard cursor, return, uh, keyboard cursor, whoops, I didn't mean to do that, delete, and then return, um, oh, there's an extra one I missed, just above here, there it is, and put a return in through there, and that puts in all of our bullets, um, actually, I do think that photo works like that with it without going into our portrait one so again rinse and repeat we'll duplicate that section and we'll go in for problem solved and again paste that into the text window um, make that go back to the visual window put that as a heading three put this as bullet text and put in a return there and one more Stick with it. There's only more, one more to go. Actually, you know the process. I'll put the video on pause. All right. And then to finish off, there's several calls to action. Um, potentially too many calls to action. Um, well, not, not th this is perfect for the, for, the, for the newsletter, email newsletter. Don't get me wrong. That, that's perfect. But we don't need to get in touch because we, we've already got a footer with the contact and subscribe and things like that. But um, need inspiration or our products? Um, I might just, now Katie can always change this. You see, um, the way Katie from um, Retaining Wall Systems works is she'll do most of this stuff herself. 
And then if she's got a question, she'll ask me. I make these videos to explain um, how to do certain things. And Katie will then take it from there. And then if she's got additional questions, she knows she can always ask me and I'm always here to help. So I'm going to suggest that that call to action button goes here to the services in terms of need more inspiration. No, actually, probably the gallery. Need more inspiration. Have a look at the gallery and have a look at the different um, products on offer there. All right. So we'll put that in as a as a button. Now, we've already got our button style um, established. Um, that's in the customizer for Astra theme. So all we need to do is put in the link and um, and the text. Need, I'll, I'll, I'll type this one. Um, need inspiration question mark. Is that spelt right? Yes, it is. And then we'll make um, we'll make some a, a bit more space just as the final bit. We'll make some space. In fact, I don't need to. That's that's a waste of sections. I'll just drag and drop that in there and get rid of that extra section. It's not necessary. And here we'll put in some more padding at the bottom. We'll put in 5% padding there at the bottom. Okay. And update that. So what we have now is we have a post. Um, and because we've only got one post, it doesn't make sense to make a blog. Well, I'll make the blog page, but it, it doesn't make sense to um, to put this. At, at, uh, 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 look, let me explain by doing it. So, okay, so we've got a post. Where would we put this post? If we had lots of posts, we'd make a blog page. Let's make a blog page now. Um, and um, I guess we'll call it, we'll call it projects, but we can always change that. Okay. And um, we'll call that projects. And again, the, the same dealio here, no sidebar, full width stretched, disable title breadcrumbs and featured image. Um, disable the um, those um, standard headings because we've got our own custom heading and press publish. Now, before I go to the next section, there's one more thing I should have done. And that is here on this new post that we've created. Um, you know what? I kind of like this header that's, that's not transparent. I think I'll leave this for now, but we'll do another video on transparent headers like how why is this page transparent header, for instance, and why is this page not? We'll cover that in, in, in another video. But I actually quite like this look here right now. This this I think this looks good, personally. So I'm going to leave it like this for now. And it's a bit of variety. I think it's nice and clean and clear. Um, you know, th this is a, um, a retaining wall website for the construction um, builders, um, retaining wall systems. And as you can see, the, the design is meant to look solid and secure. And, and that's what you want. That, that's the feeling that, that, that you want to get across. And I think that's doing that. But Katie can always, Katie is a really great designer. And so I love um, showing her how she can achieve all the different looks and, and styles that she wants to do on the website. But really what I'm showing you now is edit this post. What I forgot to do is add a category. And here under categories, if I click on categories, for some strange reason, it's not come up yet. Oh, it was still loading. Yes, it was still loading. Now, now we don't want this to be uncategorized. We actually want this to have a category, but we don't have the category there we want. So we're going to add a category called projects. Okay. And that will act, that is a parent category. We'll add the new category. We've selected projects. Now we press update. All right. And now we can view our post again. All right, so I just needed to show you how to set categories here on this post because now here on this new projects page that we've made, we're going to go and edit this with Elementor. Okay, and what we're going to do is um, we're going to add, um, we'll add a template. We'll add that top section template again. Um, section top page. Insert that. Do you really want to import um, 
Do you want to also import? No, we don't need to. We already set up our settings. Um, and now, as discussed, um, we actually want that full width. And also, um, we don't really need that background. I, I just think that's over. We, we don't need that, I believe. Katie might change her mind. She knows how, how to, to make it go back to the way she wants. Um, background there. Whoops. No, actually, the background had a slideshow, didn't it? We'll delete the sl slideshow. And we'll add uh, just a couple more of those new ones. So where's our 16 by 9? Actually, I don't want a slideshow on this. I'm just going to ha have a, an image. So we'll go back to classic um, image. And we'll just put in this 16 by 9 one here. We'll insert that one. Um, instead of bottom center, we'll make it center center. And um, instead of fix, we'll make it a scroll, which is easier to position. Um, I'm, I can talk more about background images later. And I don't believe that this column needs to have um, a color behind it. So we'll get rid of that color we'll get rid of the background overlay color and um and remove that and yeah I'm, I'm happy with that um and now what we'll do is we'll add whoops sorry i don't want to add a template what i want to do now is add one row here and we'll drop um we'll drop a posts widget in there so i'm just looking for in the widget section in elementor i'm looking for posts and we'll use our ultimate add-ons for Elementor post. Um, that's, um, again, all of this software, you can either buy it directly, Ultimate add-ons, um, or you get this um, for free as part of either the Foxy's Web Designer Club or part of our maintenance plan. You get um, access to our huge library of software. All right, so notice how we've got all the posts here for their services. Um, we don't want that, we just want projects. So what we'll do is we'll come over, um, we'll click on this widget and we'll click on the query. We're going to go a main query. No, actually, sorry, we're going to go a custom query. It'll be posts. Yes, it will be. And it will be match categories. And the categories will be projects. So now because there's only one project, only one project appears. Um, and because of that, because of that, to make this look better, not that we'll even use this, I wouldn't recommend using this page until we've got at least three projects, but I'm just teaching you this and we're, we're forward planning, okay? Um, this, because there's just one of them, we might use a different skin here. Um, we've got card, creative feed. We'll stick with creative feed for now. That looks better when there's just one post. And we'll change this later when we get more than one post. And um, what we'll do... Sorry, that's the phone. Just bear with me. All right, back again. Now, where were we? Um, yeah, so we, we've created this blog page. Did we put some space above and below? No, we, 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 we were yet to do that. Percentage space. Um, I think three above looks nice. What does five look like? Probably too much. And we'll turn off this link because I want to have five at the bottom, five percent at the bottom, and then that's our that's our blog page. Whoops, it's it's saying stay on page. I hadn't waited long enough to update it. Just make sure that's updated. It is. So now I can view the page and have a look at that. Um, now I I don't think we we need it to say projects, and I don't think we even need it to have the date there. So let's just uh, quickly edit that um, just bear with me we'll get rid of our skirt Scurly assistant by the way I was talking about this earlier there's just so much you can do with Scurly, but it also helps you write compelling content it helps you rank for keywords that you choose by giving you a, a friendly checklist of things tasks that you have to achieve um, to rank highly on Google but we'll do another less lesson on that another time. Right now, we're just going for the look and feel on this post widget. What we want to do is we want to turn off the meta. Um, so when we turn off the meta, the date disappears. And we also want to turn off that taxonomy badge. Taxonomy means um, um, how you file information. 
um, how you navigate information. And I, I'm happy with that. Now, the, the client can always update that later as they um, see fit as well. All right, so let's go and view that one more time. We've now got the projects page. And when you click on this, it takes you to the post that we just created. Um, the client can grab that link up here and then go into the email newsletter and say, read more. There's probably just a little bit too much space between each of these um, sections. All right. So you probably are quite confident on how to do this already, but we'll just do one of them. We'll just fix up one of them and have a look. It's because we duplicated these sections and we actually have space above and below. And what we'll just do is we'll remove all the space um, above those sections, okay? And just have some padding below, um, which is probably enough, probably enough white space. Um, don't be afraid to use white space in a design. White space is a designer's friend. Um, it helps um, bring focus to elements and it really does help make a website look um, clean and stylish when you've got plenty of white space. But I feel that's probably enough white space, what we've got there. And as I say, the client can always come in and fix it. Oh, and one last thing. Look, I need to update these photos, don't I? Well, look, you, you surely you... you um, you understand how to do that by now, but if not, just hang on because we're coming to the end of the video. So um, I'll just replace those those vi those photos. I'll put this on pause or we'll do the first one, but you know how to do that now. You click on that, make sure the image size is full so it, it, it takes up the full size um, of how big that photo is. And we've got, um, we've got a 16 by 9 photo there that we'll use. And one more. Actually, I won't put it on pause. Here we go. Um, and this was a... No, that's the old one, sorry. Um, and there's a 16 by 9 there that we can use. And that's it. We update that. Now, as I say, um, the client wanted this because what they want to do is have just um, an abbreviated version of, of this post or this blog or, um, um, or this project report, whatever you want to call it, um, so what they'll need to do is copy this link up here and then when they go into their mail poet newsletter that they're designing um, They'll have a button down here and it will say something like read more and they'll put the link for it in there Okay, um, but we're going to do a whole lesson on um, email newsletters soon um, but only when when some of our new newer members are actually using mail poet there's not a lot of point me showing you how to use MailPoet if you don't have it installed on your website, all right? Um, but as I say, this MailPoet software, you can send it up to 25,000 subscribers. So gone are the days when you have to pay money every month to MailChimp or, um, or um, Campaign Monitor or GetResponse or any number of the different um, email newsletter suppliers out there. Um, I have actually multiple solutions for your email newsletter needs, but my favorite one is MailPoet. So get in touch if you're interested in having MailPoet installed on your website, as well as Skirly SEO. So if you're interested in Skirly SEO and um, all of the benefits that you get with Skirly SEO, um, it's, it, visit their website to learn more about that. Um, but you can have, that's just two pieces of amazing software that I can install on your website and you'll never have to pay for it as long as you've got a subscription with the Foxy Web Designers Club or with the maintenance contract that we offer. Um, the maintenance contract um, comes with a whole range of other benefits as well. So you'd use the maintenance contract if you want me to do everything for you or you use the Designers Club if you want access to all the software and you want me to train you on everything I know about graphic design and web design since I started designing in 1986. All right, as always, if you've got more questions, please do ask me. Um, that's what I'm here for. I love it when you ask questions and I love uh, being able to make you confident and capable to design online.